Hi everyone, my name is Manik Madan and in this video we'll talk about how to prepare for next PG and USMLE simultaneously. So what are my credentials? Well, I have a step 1 score of 260, step 2 CK score of 271. So this puts me in the 99th percentile. I also have a neat PG error of 4480 without any coaching. What that means is I did not do any grand tests, no question banks like Maro or Prep Ladder, no Bhatia, no dams. I did a little bit of Maro's uh, videos uh, from medicine, OBGYN and surgery, but other than that, I did not prepare for NEAT PG at all, but got a 4480 score. So rank. So uh, let's talk about the resources that helped me succeed in medicine and like score these ranks. Uh, so like the first resource I would want to recommend everybody is first aid. So this is like my Bible for medicine because first aid is that one single book in all of medicine that literally contains almost any thing and everything you need to know about medicine because and the, the best part is is it is integrated a lot of people and the first aid i'm talking about is the first aid for usmd step one not the first aid for usmd step two ck that one i don't really recommend a lot but for the first aid for the usmd step one is not just preclinical it is also clinical the reason i'm saying that is is because let's say you have physiology pharmacology and biochemistry and pathology when you combine these subjects it makes medicine and it has a lot of clinical uh, like syn like it gives you a lot of knowledge on clinical scenarios like there's things about sle and will connect so many things from different subjects so it is again a very good clinical book and the best part is is it integrates multiple subjects which is the main point about medicine that you need to integrate things right so for example if there's a chapter about mi in cardiology there you'll get to learn about the path okay what happens in the first four hours you really not see anything in the microbiology right but then you'll start seeing uh, reversible changes irreversible changes and all of those things you'll see that and then there are things about biochem okay calcium when, when you have that infarction calcium starts going in there's things about anatomy also okay why is the myocardial ischemic angina pain radiating to the left arm because there's a reason for that because it is innervated by the T1 to T5 sympathetic derm like uh, sympathetic plexus, which make, basically makes it radiate to your neck and a lot of your, uh, uh, I think the left arm, right? So that is something also. And then it gives you information about drugs, about MI, okay, aspirin, okay. Uh, all the platelet inhibitors that we use for MI, like we also use ACE inhibitors, so that's also there. And all the physiology is also mentioned for MI. And this is true for a lot of clinical uh, conditions in first aid. And I think this is one of the best books in medicine and is the most distilled like book in medicine. And I think this was intensely helpful uh, for me to get a really good rank in need PG. A lot of people from Ames also read first aid. Like my, I have my brother uh, who is studying in Ames Rishikesh is also reading first aid. The second thing I would recommend is Kaplan notes and Kaplan notes are beautiful because I have never seen any other resource go into the depth of a subject as much as Kaplan notes. If you can get the videos, that's great. But like, and you can, and if you can combine them, that's amazing too. But what happens is marrow and prep ladder, they are like great, but they just like take you through the width of medicine. They don't really take you throughout the depth of medicine, right? But Kaplan notes, let's say there's a uh, notes for physiology, biochem, they will make you dive deep into every single uh, physiology. And this was really helpful for me. So I would definitely advocate for Kaplan notes, especially uh, the ones for USMLE step one. I don't know about USMLE step two CK because I did not use any, but if you can get your hands on the Kaplan notes for USMLE step one and read them in especially your preclinical years, it will be very helpful to you. And this is highly recommended. The second thing I recommend everyone do for next PG and USMLE is sketchy. So what is sketchy and uh, sketchy is basically visual mnemonics and the way this thing really works is through evolutionary psychology, right? We are actually meant to remember pictures and not words or numbers, right? Just think about the instances in your life you remember the most and that did not require any revisions. It's actually memories that are visual spatial. That is like, let's say your childhood, go back to your childhood. And think about things you can remember. All of them are images. None of them are words. None of them are numbers because our brain has evolved to remember uh, images. It's actually because our ancestors like who 
were uh, let's say 100,000 years back, they were hunters, right? So ha they had to remember the pathways, like from where uh, they got their food, they had to remember the locations. So our brain is very visual, specially oriented to learn. And if you add, like there, there are other things also, like you can check out my course, High Intensity Learning, it's free. Uh, like, and I'll mention the link down below for the first month. So it actually explains how you can convert words and images into visual spatial pictures and add emotion to learn them forever. and decrease the need for revision. Sketchy also works in similar ways. So let's say we are looking at microbiology, right? Microbiology. So in sketchy microbiology, this is the picture for salmonella that they explained, right? So for salmonella, you can see a salmon, right? Now you'll remember salmonella, right? Salmonella has a capsule. So you can see that capsule there, right? Uh, with the dish. It actually is uh, like, you can get salmonella by eating ch chicken, right? So you can see that typhoid and salmonella enteritis, and no, not typhoid, especially salmonella enteritis, you can get that. It also has a type three secretion system, which uh, is not shown here. So like, but they, they show that in the sketchy micro videos, there's an injection screen, uh, syringe, and this is what causes the inflammatory diarrhea. How do you treat it? Fluoroquinolones. So you can see that flower. So that flower stands for fluoroquinolones, right? And um, this is actually acidase uh, susceptible. So that lemon uh, suggests acidase. So this is very useful. And see, like I even remember this right now. I did sketchy micro, like I think two or two years back, one, one or two years back. And I still remember almost every part of microbiology thanks to sketchy micro very highly recommended there's also videos for pharmacology that i would highly recommend there's also videos for uh, i think anatomy also and biochem there are videos for biochem that you can watch amazingly helpful this will actually help you retain information way easier the second uh, visual uh, mnemonics i would recommend is picmonic now this is free remember sketchy is paid but picmonic itself is free and the videos I would recommend for picmonic are for especially neurocutaneous disorders like tuberous sclerosis, uh, Sturge Weber, neurofibromatosis 1, 2 and uh, von Hippel Lindau. I used uh, picmonic to remember them and picmonic actually has picmonics which are visual mnemonics for almost any condition in medicine and it was really really so like helpful for me to retain information as I went along. I actually did not revise anything for need PG, which is like unheard of. And the reason I did not revise a lot for need PG was because of visual mnemonics, mainly sketchy and picmonic. Highly, highly recommended. The fourth resource I would recommend everybody get in med school for our next PG in USML is Pathoma. Now, the reason, and Pathoma is actually a book by Hussein A. Sattar, and this is widely used for USML. And the best part about Pathoma is like, it actually tries to explain pathology, which like not a lot of people do. Pathology people think is all about memorizing, but Hussein A. Sattar like does a really, really good job to kind of uh, do a bit of storytelling, explaining how pathology comes into play. And he'll not try to make you memorize it. He'll try to make you understand pathology. And the other best part I like about uh, fundamentals of pathology, Pathoma, is that it is very concise and like for pathology, which Robbins isn't. So Robbins is again highly recommended. If you're reading Robbins, go to, right? You have to read gold standard books, but Pathoma would actually help you consolidate a lot of pathology that, that you need to know for both next PG, USMLE, need PG, or any other exam in medicine. The fifth resource that I highly stand by are Dr. Najib videos. And like I got them for about $10. My brother also uses my subscription right now. And like this is a forever subscription, lifetime subscription. It never goes away, highly cheap. And like sometimes it's about $100, but on offers you can get it for $10. My favorite videos from Dr. Najib was about the ECG. I did not first know how ECG worked and I was highly confused, but his video about mastering clinical ECG, which you can see here, was so really uh, helpful because I got to learn about the R complex, like how the R way progression, there's just so many interesting things in ECG. And he tries to not make you again memorize, but literally under make you understand a lot of these videos. So a lot of the concepts in ECG, the renal videos about acute renal failure, chronic renal failure, how to differentiate different types of renal failure are actually very, very helpful. And I would highly advocate for that. And he also has videos on anatomy where he talks about uh, uh, central venous thrombosis, sagittal venous thrombosis, all like, and that was so, so helpful for like for me for USMLE step one and, uh, you know, my next PG. 
The sixth resource I really stand by is Boards and Beyond. And this is like right now, there are two versions right now. There's the one for step one and there's the one for step two CK. I've heard great things about the step two CK one, but I haven't personally tried them because I did not have the time. You guys can check that out. The step one videos are highly recommended and I think you should do them with first aid because the best part about Boards and Beyond is it goes hand in hand with first aid. So let's say you're reading a chapter about cardiology. So Boards and Beyond will follow the exact pattern of first aid, like from A to Z and explain it in that way. And what I did was when I was like reading my first aid with Boards and Beyond, which was my first pass of first aid, I actually started annotating a lot of BNB things on first aid because first aid misses upon a few points, which BNB does elaborate on and give you that and that was really helpful. So I would highly recommend Boards and Beyond for step one. Uh, when you're in your preclinical years, this held me ace my step one, step two CK. And I think I wouldn't have been able to do, do it. Again, this is paid. So uh, there's again a free resource if you want that, that's online med ed. This is uh, free. And uh, online med ed is for uh, both preclinical. They have videos for both preclinical branches and uh, clinical branches. So you can watch it for that. This is like mainly for step one and step two CK. They also have other videos about uh, internship bootcamp that teaches you about, okay, uh, CPR, how the best way to do that. So I, uh, again, like you can try it out. I've heard a lot of people having insane success with online med ed. The eighth resource I would recommend is Anki. So let's say you got into med school. The first thing I would advise you to get something is called the Anking deck. So what is first of all Anki? Anki is spaced repetition, right? This is a spaced repetition software and spaced repetition has been shown to improve retention and beat the forgetting curve so that you remember things for a very long period of time. And this is very helpful, right? And the decks that I'm talking about, the Anking deck, the Tazanki deck, these are actually pre-made decks by somebody who wrote like step one and step two CK and then like consolidated all the information that was needed for these exams in just one deck. And that is so helpful. Let's, let's say you just start in first year, right? With the Anking deck, right? For step one and step two CK, you start with the step one prep. Imagine you have four years to go through the whole deck. That is so much like time. And when like, instead of wasting time, you could actually do the hunting deck in increase your attention consolidation. And I think that's very helpful. I wish I knew about Anki when I started med school, but, and I also will mention uh, the link down below where you can download the Anking deck. I'll also mention a video that shows you how to install uh, the Anking deck. It's a, uh, from my friend who's uh, called Mad About Medicine and he made a really good video on how to use Anki. Highly recommended. You can even uh, put it on your phone. So you can uh, use it on your PC or you can use it on your phone and it's up to you. Uh, I use it mostly on my phone. Like whenever I'm free, let's say I'm wasting time, I would just open Anki and just like go through cards. Uh, I mainly use it on the browse mode, which is something you will discover when you start Anki. The ninth resource that I would highly recommend is Marrow and Prep Ladder videos. Now, one of the best part uh, that happened uh, in this time is Marrow and Prep Ladder because they eliminated the need for offline coaching. And I really, really don't like offline coaching because then you have to sit there for like 12 hours and just like, you don't even retain a lot of information and it just feels like a lot of waste of time. With Marrow and Prep Ladder, you can self-pace your preparation, which is so really helpful. And they also have question banks to do. So you can do those question banks and like that will also, so, and question banks are very helpful, like in Marrow and Prep Ladder. The reason question banks are so helpful is because they stimulate two things. The first thing they stimulate is active recall. And active recall is this phenomena where you try to pull out information from your head to answer something. And active recall has been shown to improve retention far more than repetition. So that's very good with a question bank. So for every subject, Marrow and Preparator have their question banks and you can do them. The second thing, uh, like uh, question bank stimulate is spaced repetition. And the way that works is because you're gonna see similar concepts across multiple question banks. So let's say I did the Marrow question bank, right? then maybe I can do a question bank that is USMLE RX. So there's, there are question banks uh, like for USMLE, USMLE RX, and you're gonna see similar concepts from Marrow being tested on USMLE RX, maybe on AMBOSS, maybe on Kaplan question bank, maybe on UWorld, right? And that is very helpful. So I actually in my USMLE prep did tons of question banks for the USMLE, both for step one 
and step two CK. For step one, I did almost every question bank. US Assembly RX was my first question bank. Then I think I did uh, Kaplan, a bit of Kaplan, not all of it. Then I did UL and Amber simultaneously. And this was like one of the reasons I scored very high on my US MLEs. And I think this can be really helpful, like doing multiple question banks. If you have the time, if you don't have the time, you can just use one. However, like, you know, having those two things on my side, active recall and spaced repetition, set me apart from the rest of the competition. And I, I would highly recommend that. The next thing, uh, and Marrow and Preparator videos, yeah, they have like everything for preclinical and postclinical, and you can definitely check them out. Amazing uh, videos. I think uh, the one, uh, the medicine videos by Rakesh Nair, uh, Dr. Rakesh Nair, who is a teacher in Marrow, uh, were amazing. The OBGYN videos were amazing. And uh, highly recommended, choose any one. I don't think it really makes a di big difference. Uh, the 10th resource I would recommend is Radiopedia. And you can see an image from Radiopedia. And uh, Radiopedia is just a collection of uh, X-ray images, MRI images, all of that, so that you can correlate, let's say your anatomy, right? What you're learning with what is real life, right? X-rays, real life stuff, X-rays that, that, that you can use in medicine. So that's very helpful. The, and I've already talked about quotient banks. The third thing I would actually highly, highly recommend, and this was a game changer for me for learning anatomy, is Human Anatomy Atlas 3D. So this is actually a software that is there on iOS and Android. And I actually have it on my iPad. And this was a game changer for me on anatomy because this helped me learn anatomy in a 3D manner. The thing with, like there are other atlases, uh, such as Netra's Atlas, which, which is good enough, but it doesn't show everything in 3D. It's actually very 2D. And we humans, again, have a very visuospatial memory. Like because our ancestors had a visuospatial memory, we are the sons and daughters of the same ancestors, right? So it is intent, like the best way to learn anatomy would be in 3D, right? So, and this is highly, highly accurate. It has an accuracy rate of, I think, 95 to 96%, and that's good enough. And I, I'll just show you a demo of how this works. So here you guys, uh, now you can see the Human Anatomy Atlas app. So just look at how good this app is. So let me just show you around. So let's say there are like different system views, like, you know, and then there are regional views. So let's say you want to like do head and neck, right? just look at how good everything is. You can like look at, okay, this is the eye, right? Let me just show it to you uh, one second. And then you can see, okay, different muscles like occip occipital frontalis. And then you can even look at nerves, which is really helpful. And it is all in 3D. And then there are other things. Let's say you want to see how these muscles really work, right? I want to see how this muscle works. Now, the best part is you can actually see that. Can you see it, right? How sternocleidomastoid works. That is ingenious. Not only that, the other part I like about Human Anatomy Atlas, let me just show you around, is the gross anatomy view where you can even dissect. So you can even dissect things. So let's say you want to dissect the back, right? The best part about is, let's say we, we start dissecting. Okay, dissect. See, I'm starting to dissect everything. So you can actually do a, a 3D dissection, which is so really helpful. Like if you missed out on dissection in your anatomy lab, and then there is also cross-sectional views. So you can see like this cross-sectional views, which was very helpful. So let's say now, like just look at how cool that is. So this we know is like uh, the lateral thalamic nuclei. And you can also see different kinds of views. So let's say I want to like see, I want to go a bit more down, right? Now I can go there. And that is ingenious. And then there's another part to this that you should definitely know about. Uh, let me just show you around. You can even make this whole image into like an X-ray, like or an MRI. Oh, sorry, this is the MRI scan. So, uh, which is very helpful. This is the cadaver from the cadaver. This is from the MRI. And look, we can even like look at things. Uh, like that's the hippocampus. You can see that. So that's very helpful. There's another part that I really like about it. That's microanatomy. So you can see like the eye. This is beautiful. Look at that. The whole eye, and you can see that the lacrimal, um, the lacrimal glands. You can see that this is the duct, the lacrimal duct. Uh, so very helpful. So you can see microanatomy, and even th there are views for the alveoli, the inner ear, which is so helpful. So this is the ear. You can see the middle ear, the inner ear, the cochlea the vestibular nerve, how the facial nerve plays a part. So I think human anatomy atlas is a game changer for anatomy. It also shows you muscle actions, 
like you know let's say you want to see okay how does adduction come into play what muscles pectoralis you can see the pectoralis muscle doing adduction so that again is a game changer i think so guys uh, i hope you like the video if you did please uh, the 14th resource i actually wanted to talk about was my youtube channel a joke it's it's not, it's it's a, it's a pj so i'm really good at making pjs so just please like and subscribe if you gained some value from this video do share the video if this helped a lot and thank you for watching